Where's the ham? It's Christmas dinner tonight. Salad first. You know that, honey. Sally. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food that we are about to eat on this beautiful Christmas Eve. We thank you for our health and the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, as well as the ones that you will in the future. As we know, it is for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I don't know how many times I have to ask for this. Ugh. Sally, stop it. I know you must be really busy with Christmas coming and everything, but I really like that new bike, the blue one with the squishy seat that I've been praying for all year. Please check your messages. Amen. Betsy, shouldn't you be asking Santa for a new bike? But Santa doesn't answer prayers, Mama. Good night. I can't come to the phone right now. Leave a message. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> The power of prayer should not be underestimated. James 5, 16 through 18 declares, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah. Elijah, just a man, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain over the land for three and a half years. He prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced their crops. Our God most definitely answers our prayers, listens to our prayers, and moves in response to our prayers. Our Heavenly Father loves us. And like any father who loves his children, he knows what is best for us. Even if we don't, God, he may not always bless you with what you want and pray for, but I promise you this, he will give you what you need. And when you pray, be thankful for what God has blessed you with and for what God will bless you with. Let us pray. <laughs> Betsy. Hello, Pastor John. How are you today? I'm fine, I'm fine. Good, good, good. How's your dad? Oh, he's fine. Still living in Arizona. He loves the heat. I know. We can't get him back here. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so give it to me. What do you think of the sermon? <laughs> I loved it. Good. Yeah, you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. Mm hmm Well, it must be the case here because he hasn't answered any of my prayers. At least none that I can remember. Are you sure? Like I said in the sermon, there's a reason for that. Probably because he doesn't check his messages. He gets a lot of them. I guess so. I don't mean to be rude, but I gotta get home. I got a big day on Tuesday, and I want to be ready for it. What happens Tuesday? God is going to come through. Wow. Have a nice day, Pastor John. You too. Hey, Betsy. Hey, Mark. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Bets. Good sermon. Yeah, it was. How are you guys? We're good. We owe that all to you. Betsy, the matchmaker. <laughs> no, you should do some matchmaking for yourself. <laughs> Doesn't work as well for me. Well, maybe you can say a prayer and have God help you find the right guy. See ya. <sighs> I did. There you are. 
Veronica, what are you doing here? I knocked on your door, but you weren't home. So I took a chance. You said that you came here a lot. What's up? I'm heading out for an audition in about a half an hour and really need someone to run these lines with me. Would you? Yeah, I, I have an important meeting with a publisher on Tuesday, uh, so I, I really need to prepare. That's amazing. For one of your books? Which one? Wishes gets her wish. That's amazing. I am so happy for you. Well, nothing's actually happened yet. I know it will. You're an amazing writer with an amazing talent and an amazing cat. Let's get started. Dear? You're Sebastian, and I'm Winfred. You've just been bitten by a zombie tree. Zombie tree? Is it a comedy? Oh, no. An amazing new concept. The writer's amazing. Fresh out of Columbia College. Lay down on the floor. What? The floor. You're missing a leg. A white crab apple bit it off. And your left hand has a couple fingers missing. The floor? Yeah. I've just come home and found you lying there. There's blood everywhere. Can I just do it from here? Your line is, it's the white crab apple. It bit me. It's the crab apple. White. White. I told you to stay away from those horrible trees. What will I do without you? How will I be able to defeat the trees? Wait. The trees are zombies? <laughs> gotcha. Sebastian. Where is the antidote? It's too late for that now, my love. I gave it to little Elizabeth. She might be able to outsmart the trees. I am but an old man with no furniture. Future. Uh, future. You are such a good man. I hate to see you go. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. It's called acting, people. Rodney Love. Okay, tell the casting director I'm on my way. Rodney Love? Stage name. How many of these auditions do you go by? Hundreds. Do you ever get the part? It's not the end of the journey, but it's the getting there that counts. So that's what helps. I hope I get the part. Uh, where's the audition? In the city. Burger King on Adams. My neighbor, she's an actress. Or at least she thinks she is. Wishes! Where are you, girl? Wishes! Hello? You gonna take your afternoon nap? A good day for that, for sure. Heavenly Father, please watch over Dad and be with Mrs. Parker from church who will be undergoing heart surgery later next week. Don't forget about Tuesday. Amen.
The dentist will be with Josh in about 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Well, hello, Miss Piscotti. What are you doing here? I need to see the dentist. It's an emergency. What kind of emergency? I lost a tooth. One he was working on, it came loose. Do you know where you lost it? Swallowed it. You swallowed it? Got mixed in with some french fries. Can you put it back in? I'm sorry, Mrs. Piscotti. I hate to tell you, if it was a tooth and it comes out, there's no way that a dentist can put it back in your mouth. Um, it... wait, uh, you said you have the tooth with you? It took a while. Came out this morning. Wasn't gonna just flush it down the toilet. This was my best tooth for chewing. <sighs> Wanna see it? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Piscotti. The dentist can't see you without an appointment. I can schedule you one right now uh, f for next week. Let's see, I have Monday. Okay. You want to keep the tooth here until I come back? No. No. I bet you're excited. I am. Oh, uh, don't worry, you got time. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you shouldn't get your hopes up too high. I've been praying. Before your sister passed away, you said you prayed night and day at home, at the hospital, for months. And then, when she died, I'm just saying. I've been writing books for seven years. Okay, I'm a good writer, and God has placed Anne Westfall in my life for a reason. Now, who is she again? She is the woman who has a connection to Vanguard Publishing. One of the biggest book publishers in the country! Have you seen any proof? I just can't believe that God would have brought me this far. For nothing. <laughs> what? Proof. What kind of proof? Proof that this woman is who she says she is and that she actually has this big connection. I looked her up on the internet. She's got a very good looking LinkedIn page. Oh! And... Oh, that's different! Come on! Everybody has a LinkedIn page. Okay. She seems to know a lot about books and publishing, and I have no reason not to believe her. Have you given her any money? Yes. For what? Expenses and things. <sighs> okay. You guys feel okay? Uh, yeah, thank you. Just let me know. Thank you. You better get back. Oh, okay. I will see you tomorrow. Oh, no, I took off work for the meeting. Oh, that's right. Well, good luck tomorrow. Seriously. May the force be with you. <laughs> okay, that's not serious. <laughs> but thank you. Bye. Tomorrow's the big day, wishes. Big day. Better be. Heavenly Father. I'm a little nervous. intervene tomorrow and I will finally get the success that I've been praying for. In Jesus' name, amen. Why? They liked the story, but they felt the writing was childish. Kids don't know what's childish or what's professional. They just know what they like. And, and, and parents that I know that read it to their kids, they love it. Betsy, of course your friends and family are going to love it. Vanguard has been publishing books since the early 60s. They know the business. But you said that I'd get money. Only if they liked it. 
What about the money that I gave you? I did what I could. That's what the money was for. We took a chance, and it didn't pan out. Miss Westfall, I don't know what you make, but that was a lot of money. I know this isn't what you wanted to hear. Don't be discouraged. Keep writing. Maybe you can get a smaller publishing company to put out one of your future books, and Vanguard will take a second look at you. You told me that I would get a check for $10,000. I was counting on that money. I know. I'm sorry. This is going to sound corny and simplistic, but you, you held my dreams in the palm of your hand. And now you act like you don't even care. People warn me that this could be a scam. A scam. After everything that I've done What for you. exactly have you done? You know, I, I haven't seen any papers or anything in writing. You are inexperienced. I don't expect you to know how things work in the professional world of publishing. They didn't like the book. How many other people have you done this to? Don't you check your messages? I believe in you. You know I do. I have all my life. Ever since I was a little girl, I never lost my faith. After Sally died. Then after I lost Mom. I know you were there watching over me. I felt you. What am I doing wrong? Have I been selfish? When I pray, I ask for things for others first, always putting myself second. You know this meant a lot to me. I keep falling deeper and deeper into debt. I could use a new car, a better job. Would it be too much to ask for just a little success here? You know, what did I do that was so bad in this life that you can't answer just one of my prayers.
this is your coat? No. That is not my coat. <laughs> cool. God bless you, sister. stolen car. My car! It's been stolen! Betsy Simon. I'm outside of St. John's Church. Oh, finally! Oh. You Betsy Simon? Yes! Oh, it took you long enough. I'm freezing. Probably should have a coat on. I did, but some homeless woman has it now. It wasn't my coat anyway. What? No, never mind. <laughs> my car. It's been stolen. What makes you think it's been stolen? I parked it right here. It was here a little while ago. I had an important meeting downtown. I drove it here. I parked, went inside, came out. It's gone. Right here where the truck's at? Yes. And you have no idea whose truck this is? No, I've never seen this truck before. <laughs> I just ran the registration. The plate comes back to a Betsy Simon Bennett. Who? Betsy Simon Bennett. That's you, right? Yes, but no Bennett. So this isn't your truck? I don't think so. Excuse me? I mean, the fur coat wasn't mine either! These clothes, these shoes, this really nice purse! I mean, if this was my truck, I would probably have the keys, wouldn't I, officers? You know, can I see some ID? ID? Yeah, driver's license. Might be in here. <laughs> Simon, is it possible your husband, Mr. Bennett, switched vehicles with you? No, no, he wouldn't do that. I don't think. If I was married, which I'm not. Miss Simon, don't call 911 unless you have a real emergency. But not a civil matter. Hey, again, let's go. Let's go. I'm Mario Gonzalez. Who are you? Uh, well, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, you're in my apartment. I am? Where's my cat? Wishes? Where are you, girl? But, but lady, 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 there's no cat in here. I think you have the wrong apartment. Mario, who is that? It's some crazy lady looking for her cat. Wishes! Mexican man is holding my cat hostage. The cops won't believe me. This isn't my truck! I don't even like trucks! These aren't my clothes! Oh. What 
much as I really like this purse. This isn't my purse! Mrs. Piscotti. It's me! Betsy! Betsy Simon! Well, hello! Hi, can I help you? And who are you? Do you have an appointment? Wait, 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 wait. Miss Piscotti, you know who I am, right? Yes. Tell her. You're the cat lady. Cat lady? No! <sighs> Betsy Simon. Right! The cat lady. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. You, yeah, you have no idea who I am. And you don't know that Mrs. Piscotti uh, has swallowed and passed a tooth that she has come here to make the dentist put back in her mouth. Am I right? What tooth? You know what? I, I've seen this kind of thing played out too many times in books and movies. I'm just gonna come off like a total crazy person! So I think that it is best um, that I leave. You got that right. Well, I don't know what that was all about, but here's the tooth. <laughs> All right. I'm a writer. If I was a character in one of my own books and this was happening, I'd probably continue to go to places that I know only to find out that they no longer exist. So soon, Mrs. Bennett. Who? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, I'm back. Uh, I've been having this really strange day. I've been out of it all morning. It's like I can't remember people's names. Well, Mrs. Bennett, I sure hope you haven't forgotten mine. Your... Starts with a B. Then I need a little bit more help than that. Ends with an N. Beltron! Ooh, no. Mm. Uh, ben... Benson? Brian. 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 <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, Brian. <laughs> and uh, your... The butler. Well, only if I've been demoted from being your PA. <laughs> PA? Your personal assistant. Oh, right. Uh, well, so uh, how did everything go? Good. Where's your coat? Coat? 
your fur. Oh. Uh, I gave it to charity. What? A homeless woman, actually. Oh, Mrs. Bennett. <laughs> Mrs. Bennett? I mean, it's like every time I come into this room, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I live here. I used to live alone. I mean, before this, it was just me and my cat. <laughs> Wishes. Now I don't even know where she is. She's where she always is this time of day. Wishes? Yeah. Oh, but don't worry. She will be ready to go by the time you're dressed, and I will have Karen tend to her immediately. Karen? Yeah, she's on the phone checking arrangements with the bookstore. Bookstore? Oh, sorry. I don't mean to repeat the last word of every sentence you say. <laughs> you may want to hurry. Hurry? Change. Is there something wrong with what I'm wearing? Absolutely not. So why do I need to change? It's what you do. Ah. Should I change in the bedroom? Well, you can change any place you like, but I think the bedroom would be best. <laughs> of course. The bedroom, which is upstairs. Yes. Here I go. <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> This is a dream I might not want to wake up. Are you ready, Mrs. Bennett? Uh, I guess so. Is something wrong? No. Lovely choice. Brian is getting the car. Traffic shouldn't be too bad. We'll just be fashionably late. And you are Karen. Karen. And where are we going? Your book signing. Are you ready, Wishes? Sorry. 
Thank you. Could you make it out to Mary? Sure. Mary loves the new book. We have them all, but she likes this one the most. Thank you. What gave you the idea for this one? Well, it wasn't exactly my idea. Thank you. Be careful. No fingers in the cage. Hello. Hi. Bet you didn't see this coming. What? All this, the fame, fame and fortune. <laughs> no. I'll take wishes up to a room. I'll check the schedule for the rest of the month and see what's next. point in the story it's only logical that the main character ends up Whoa. I mean I just showered so that can't be it oh uh, sorry sugar pops but I'm not gonna be able to make dinner tonight I know again but uh, I mean I've got a meeting with the other investors and I mean we've got to lock down a director now that we have our lead actress so Bennett. Darren Bennett. You're Darren Bennett. And if I'm Mrs. Bennett, and we got married, when did that happen? How did that happen? Oh. All right, it, it's time to wake up. It is time to wake up. I need to wake up. What's wrong? Oh, you're having a nightmare. Oh, this isn't happening. This is. Oh, this isn't happening. Oh. Betsy, Sweetie, what are you doing? This is not happening. <gasps> Betsy, <gasps> Betsy, honey, you are awake. What was that for? Did you hear that? Yes! Oh, oh, me too. Brian? Uh, yes, sir. I cannot be late for this meeting. Get her something to calm her down. Yes, sir. Are you all right? Yes. Yes. I mean, no! Do you know who that is? It's the boy that I had a crush on in the eighth grade. He always called me Sugar Pops. Yes. You've told me this many times. I didn't marry him! I mean, I wanted to back then, but I was only a girl. Last I heard about him, uh, he was at the eighth grade class reunion, and he'd been married a few times. Uh, he, he lived in New York, uh, had some bad investments. They went wrong, lost a lot of money, and they went bankrupt. Wait, did he just say he went to an investor's meeting? Mrs. Bennett. Oh, don't call me that. Okay. Betsy, it was Betsy, just Betsy. Uh, it has obviously been a very long day. Um, I'll draw a hot bath for you, and I'll have the chef make one of your favorite salads for dinner. Do we have kids? No. Darren and I, it's 
sleep together? Not that I'm aware of. Nor should I be. But you don't sleep together? You and Mr. Bennett have separate bedrooms. Not that I'm complaining. Why? Well, because of your sleeping disorder. Which is? You snore. Okay, so this isn't a dream. What do I do now? What a time to get writer's block. Pastor John? Pastor John? Good morning. Can I help you? <laughs> Pastor John! You're still here! Uh, well, normally I'm here as early as 7, but the traffic today is... Oh, no, 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 I meant you. You, you're still here. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. Odds are that you won't, but I need to talk to someone who will at least give me the benefit of the doubt. That's great, and you are? I'm Betsy. Betsy Simon. Betsy Simon. Betsy Simon. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, great. I was hoping if I came back here, I could get some answers. Well, what kind of answers? We better sit down. Oh, uh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Something happened yesterday. Okay, I came in here in the morning to pray. Well, actually, it wasn't your standard format of a prayer. I was very angry with God, so I came here to let him know. And afterwards, when I walked out, that's when everything changed. What do you mean? You're not gonna believe me, because I'm not sure I believe it myself. Okay, well, believe what? My life, my entire life as I once knew it, has completely changed. Well, many people have come to God and they have left here to lead totally different lives. Yes, I, I know, but that's not what I mean. Everything around me has changed. Everything but me. I no longer live in the tiny apartment that I had where I was alone and single. I no longer work at the job that I had where I was grossly underpaid. And now, I'm married. I live in a mansion. And all of this because apparently the books I've written have done really well and have made me wealthy. And this is bad. Yes. Well, no. Not financially, but it's... Not my real life. Okay, uh, let's go back. So you say you're a writer. Yeah, yeah, I write children's books uh, that feature my cat Wishes. She's still here in this life, or at least it looks a lot like it. Wait a minute, Wishes the cat? Yeah. My sister's children love those old books. You wrote them? I think so. I, I mean, I think they're the same books. Well, then that would make you Betsy Simon Bennett. Well, yeah. Yes, I have heard of you, of course. No, 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 you don't understand. Before I walked out of this church yesterday, I, I was nobody. I was Betsy Simon. I wasn't a famous book author. I mean, it's something I've been praying for for a long time, but... If, if what you say is true, it would appear that God has answered your prayer. Wait a minute. <sighs> oh, when I first heard about LASIK surgery, I prayed for 20-20 vision because I couldn't afford it. Oh, the truck. Oh, a few years ago I saw that movie with, uh, with the pastor and his car breaks down. He prays, mm -hmm. God gives him a new truck. I needed a new car, so as a joke I prayed for one. I, I, I didn't actually think. I... Oh, and Darren Bennett. Oh, in the eighth grade I prayed that someday I would marry him. Oh, he answered them all. All of them? Okay. Well, I don't think God works. I didn't mean all of them. God, my dad always said you had a funny sense of humor, but this is 
not fun. Okay, 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 Mrs. Bennett. Oh, it's oh, Betsy! Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Betsy, Betsy, okie doke. Now, have you been under any extra pressure? What do you call oh. this? <laughs> what other prayers did he answer? Send Pastor John. You, you gotta talk to him. You gotta ask him to put it all back. You, you can do that, can't you? Hey, Betsy, I'm not sure that I can help you. Even if, even if what you're saying is true, I, I think the only one that could help you would be God himself. Um, and I am so sorry. Uh, I have a meeting with a couple who are getting married. They'll be here any time. So would you like me to pray with uh, no, you? No, 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 no prayers. No thanks for that now. Not until I figure this out. Thanks. Uh, I think. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mark. Sorry. Do I know you? Do you? Oh, probably not. Uh, are you here to see Pastor John? He said he was meeting with uh, somebody named Mark. Yes. He's marrying my brother and his fiance. Oh, good. Good for them. Thank you. Are you here alone? Yes. Do you know anybody named Michelle? Oh, I know a few Michelles. Michelle Adderley. Mm -hmm, no. Well, I've got to go. <gasps> oh, yes. Uh, thanks for your help. No problem. <gasps> oh, Mark. Um, your wife couldn't make it? I'm not married. book signing around here. I heard you were at the bookstore or the library recently. Yes, I was. Well, you look lost. Good call. Can I help you? Yes. Uh, didn't want to disturb you during lunch. I wasn't even sure you'd be here, to be honest. Well, how's that? You probably got, what, another 20 minutes before you have to go back? Uh, Do you mind if we talk? Sure. What? Like, did I win something? If so, I gotta be honest. I haven't read any of your books, although I love the commercials with the cat. Commercials? Wishes does commercials? Uh, don't do that. You didn't win anything. This is gonna sound really strange, but... What do you know about me? Uh, not much more than what I read about you on the internet or what I've seen on television. That's okay, that's okay. Anything. Uh, well, uh, you write children's books. Uh, your cat, Wishes, is it? Um, is just as popular as that grumpy cat, if not more. Um, oh, I saw on that show, Windy City Live Once, where you are originally from Southern Illinois. Um, you're an advocate for something. Advocate? For what? I can't remember. Something to do with religion, maybe? Oh, and you are married to an independent filmmaker, and you live somewhere in the north suburbs, I think. He's a filmmaker? Yeah, although I don't think he's ever done anything that anyone would know. Uh, oh, with all due respect. That's okay. That's okay. I think that's all I can remember. Thanks. That helps. Oh, wait, wait. Should I know more? <sighs> yeah. But in another life. Thanks, Randy. Wait, how did you know my nickname? Mrs. Bennett, did you forget your appointment this morning? No. I canceled. You.
cancelled? Uh, Mr. Turkle must not have been notified. How do you want me to respond? Uh, just tell him I haven't been myself lately. Literally. Look, I'm not feeling that well. I'd kind of just like to be alone. Whose bike is that? It's yours. You've had it ever since you were a little girl. But I really like that new bike. The blue one with the squishy seat. Why am I keeping it? You said that you wanted to give it to your daughter. My daughter? If you were ever to have one. I'm sorry, Mrs. Betsy. But why is everything so unclear? It's not. Not anymore. So, if he answered them all, then it only makes sense. He's got to put things back. Not now! Sorry to bother you, but your sister is here. Who? Sally? You're freaking me out. Sorry. <laughs> All you've been doing is staring at me. Did you, like, 
forget I was coming. I'm sorry. It's it's just that ever since you died, I dyed dyed your hair. You just look so different. Well. Hello, Darren. Am I interrupting something? I was about to tell my sister how grateful I was. Grateful? That she was willing to talk. Are you feeling better today, sweetie? Ah, oh, yes. Better. What happened? Um, your sister went a little bye-bye in the head yesterday. It was just stress. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it might have been because of one of the reviews of your new book. Reviews? What reviews? Hey, that's the spirit. <laughs> Listen, for those books, you wouldn't be able to produce those masterpieces of cinema. I could live without my sugar pops. And she couldn't live without her Darren. I'm irreplaceable. Work done, bewitched. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I had to meet my leading actress here today, I... I'll get that. Sugar pops. You're nothing but a box of sugar-coated cereal. <laughs> Before I run, I just wanted to introduce you two to the star of my next film, Ronnie Love. about oh it's an amazing script with amazing characters darren's such an amazing writer what's it called zombie tree <laughs> are you okay <coughs> wrong pipe wrong pipe <laughs> okay uh time to go um well uh did you take a cab just like you asked excellent i'll take my car for you why did she take a cab? Oh, well, you know, that, that's because Ronnie lives in a pretty nasty neighborhood. That's all about to change, right? Right. <laughs> Don't wait up, sugar pups. Have you ever seen any of his movies? Just the last one with the serial killer guy. What was that one called? Bad habit. <laughs> I think someone would have told him by now. Told him what? They suck. <laughs> Something wrong. Everyone. Except for you. Uh, <laughs> we never really talked. How about tomorrow? Mm, I gotta work tomorrow. Oh. Where? Tony's Cafe. Manager? <laughs> Waitress. At least I got money coming in. You could use a new coat. What? Here. Are, are you out of your mind? This is one of your favorite coats. Not anymore. Now it's yours. You need money? Brian! Oh, there you are. Uh, yes, Mrs. Be uh, Betsy. Do I have a checkbook? Yes. Uh, can you get it and fill it out so all I have to do is sign it? And make it out to Sally. Sally. What? Simon. 
Really? Oh, okay. Um, four, uh, thousand? Make it ten. What? I have that much, don't I? Drop in the bucket, right? Yes, I would say so. All right, then. Darren's going to kill me. Oh, it's my coat. No. Why are you doing this? Because you're my sister. And I've missed you terribly. I don't get it. Okay, how about this? I love you. And I don't want anything bad to ever happen to you. And that includes catching a cold. I love you too. You forgot about it. Ah, right. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. You really are the best sister anyone could ever have. Hug! in the trash, Brian. Well, will you be giving away any more coats today, Mrs. Betsy? You never know what I might be giving away, Brian. That is quite a predicament. Yeah, it is. So if you ask God to put things back and he does, then you lose Sally again. Is she different than what you remember of her? I, from before, I mean? How would I know? I mean, she died when she was 18. She's older now. You know, she's still the same funny, loving sister that she's always been. And she's always a bit sharper than I was and still lets me know it, but that's just her. You really should pray and ask God for guidance. If he is responsible for this happening, there's a reason. So God answered all of my prayers just so Sally could be alive? Even unselfish prayers made for a life to be spared or saved go unanswered. There's a reason. As painful as that might be to us, it might be best that we don't even know but if what you say and believe is true, then you have the rarest of rare opportunities to see what those reasons were. So you finally believed me? No! So, I guess this is the part of the story where the main character resolves herself into the situation and makes the best of things. Oh, hey, Mark! It's me, Betsy! From the other day. You were here uh, for your brother's wedding or... Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just in talking with Pastor John. What are you doing here? I was just dropping off stuff for the wedding. Oh, here. 
they're getting married here. It's a pretty awesome church. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, I always thought that someday I'd get married here. Hey, uh, if you're not busy right now, maybe we could go grab a cup of coffee. Uh, to get to know each other a little better, you know, because we go to the same church and everything. You go to church here? Yeah. Of course, I've been going to church here for years, just like you. You know that. No, you don't. You don't know that. Uh, scratch that. I am thinking of going to church here. Maybe you can tell me more about it. Well, I do have an hour and a half before my next appointment. Oh, great! That's great! I know a coffee shop is just around the corner. Are we going? Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful day outside. The trees, it's fall. It's my favorite time of the season. The smell, oh, it's just the best. So, what brought you to the church? <laughs> well, uh, I've been going through some serious life-changing times lately, and I needed some help sorting it all out. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you prayed for guidance? Well, <laughs> ironically, that's where the life-changing came in. So, God answered your prayers? Yep. That's wonderful. Nope. Oh. I'm sorry. It's complicated. <laughs> Very complicated. Let's just say I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place right now, and it's forcing me to make the best of a rather difficult situation. Oh. If you never got married, is there someone special? No. Not right now. Mark. If I could tell you everything, which I would so much like to do without you thinking I was completely out of my mind. Then go for it. Truth is, even though we've just met, you've been in my heart for a long, long time. As if we've known each other in another life. In that life, you were married, and I was the one who introduced you to your wife. Which even though I was happy for you and her, I regretted ever doing it. But I accepted it. And even though I, I wanted us to be together, I never prayed for it. Not once. And being that you probably won't believe me, you'll never know the irony of that right now. I just thought if it was meant to be that God would have made it happen. So here we are. You looking at me like I'm a complete nutcase and me hoping that maybe, maybe we're both here for a reason. Maybe we could have dinner and you could recommend a good psychiatrist. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm not married. I mean, I am in this life, but I'm not in the other one. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mark!
the Bible? Really? What? There's never been a Bible in this house. What? You went out and bought one? Sit. I can't. I gotta go. I got a thing. Sit down. Why do we sleep in separate bedrooms? You know why. Snoring? That's it. What else? When was the last time we... Well, I mean, it's, um... <clears throat> it, it's been a while. Wait, is that what this is about? No. I just want to know if you love me. <sighs> of course I do, sugar pops. I... You know how time-consuming pre-production is. Look, after the film is done, we'll we'll take a trip. It's Spain. We haven't been there yet. I, you know what? I gotta go. Darren. <clears throat> yeah? You were so cute in eighth grade. <laughs> well, thanks, Sugar Pops. What happened? Thanks. Mrs. Betsy? Mrs. Hopper is here to see you? Who? Bye. Caroline Hopper from the organization. What organization? Shall I send her in? Sure. Oh, Betsy. Your great room is outstanding. Did you decorate it yourself? Or did you have it done? <laughs> Definitely wasn't me. For all the time we've known each other, I can't believe this is the first time I'm seeing the inside of your beautiful home. I trust you prepared for tomorrow? Doing some research? Oh, you mean the Bible? Yes, doing some research. Good, good. This will have to be brief. I'm meeting with Charles Bellamy within the hour. We're planning that fundraiser for the following week. I need not remind you how important tomorrow is. Book signing? <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be funny? I could just see it. You and wishes on stage in front of hundreds of college students and professors. <laughs> Maybe next time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, uh, Caroline, if this isn't a, a book signing, Excuse me, I've, I've just been out of it a, a little bit. Uh, what is it? Oh. oh, oh, I know you're so comfortable with the book signings, and this is a bigger crowd than you're used to, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you'll do just fine. Now, I need you to have a look at this, take any notes, add anything from the... Bible or whatever, and I'll see you at the university tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now you rest up. Oh, I absolutely adore this room. Mm -hmm. No, God. National Organization for Getting Out Deities? Why, you did. What's wrong? Well, I tweaked it a bit as we agreed I would. <laughs> I can't say this. Oh, no time to debate this now. Maybe you should. It's your story, not mine. Let's go. Thank 
you, thank you, everyone. Our guest speaker today is a dear friend of mine who I've known for many years. She is a strong, independent woman who recently came out <laughs> about her beliefs and views on atheism. She is a celebrated author. Her children's books have sold millions of copies worldwide. She is currently working on her newest book. It's called Wishes Learns the Truth. It's a book that parents can use to introduce their children to atheism. Many of you know her as the cat lady. Ladies and gentlemen, Betsy Simon Bennett. Cat's got my tongue. <laughs> my whole life, I was told there was something greater than me. When I started writing books, I was told I was good at it. So I continued to do it, praying to God that he would make me successful as a writer. And when that finally happened, I realized for the first time in my life that it wasn't God who gave me that success. All those years of my life, Wasted on believing that a divine being would be able to make something happen when I was the only one who could. It was then that I realized there is no God. I'm sorry. I can't read this. With all due respect, I, I know that most, if not all, of you are here today because you believe that there is no God. A little over a week ago, I was Betsy Simon, and I was happy. <laughs> yeah. I was. Just like all of us, I, I wanted to make money doing what I love to do, writing books. And I met a woman who told me that she could help me do that. And I believed her. But it didn't happen. I, it was all a lie. <laughs> I was hurt. Upset, angry. And, and I blamed God for not answering my prayers for it to happen. But on the very same day that the book deal didn't happen, something else did. I got all that I ever prayed for. But nobody knows who I am. Not even me. Until now. So here I am, an advocate for non-believers in an auditorium filled with people who believe that God doesn't exist. Right. And what's truly ironic about that is if he didn't exist, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you. I can't be a part of this organization. <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, I don't understand. I can't. Not anymore. I hope you know what you're doing. Because I don't. I have no idea. No idea. Is everything okay? No, Brian. It's not. 
Brian. When we get home, I, I want you to bring me all of the financial records from the time of my first book deal. Can you do that? I'll need your approval and your signature, depending on what it is. Whatever you need. But I don't want Darren knowing about this. Okay. Wow, I'm really not used to all this hugging. Why are we meeting here? <laughs> I didn't want Darren walking in on us. I need to know something. Mm -hmm. uh, do Darren and I have a prenup agreement? You do, but you know that. We sleep in separate bedrooms because I swim. <laughs> you don't really believe that. Did I ever? What's going on? You know all these things. I don't know anything about this new one. That Bunny love, whatever. Veronica? Uh, the actress? Pretty obvious. <laughs> you mean? The two of them? Wow, there is just way too much revelation going on here. You know what he's done in the past with his other leading ladies, most of them ending up with nothing more than a cameo afterwards. Is that why you're asking me about the prenup? And he knows that you know all of this. Is that why he doesn't like you? That and the other thing. Something to do with you? He used to work for us, for Wishes Incorporated. I, I was looking into the business records and I, I just saw that you had worked for us until the end of last year and then you quit. Did it have something to do with Darren? If you really wanna know, I didn't like what he was doing. So I told him. <laughs> Didn't he tell you? Have you been unfaithful to me? Unfaithful? In my line of work, I meet a lot of women. You know that. It is not my fault that you don't make the same effort. What happened to the um, Italian guy? Wait, what? Frederico, was it? You were seeing him for like a year. I was seeing a guy named Frederico. You said you like Italian. <laughs> so, uh, you're seeing other women and I'm seeing other men. You're the one that said it's the 21st century. We can do anything we want. Not in the eyes of God. God. <laughs> Did you really just say that? Yes. Look. I don't know what happened that day at the university. But Caroline and her husband are pretty upset. I'm sure they are. If you don't want to give them our money, then... <laughs> uh, it's mostly my money. <laughs> All right. What's going on? I talked with an outside accountant. <laughs> outside? What, what, what's wrong with Jeff? He told me about the deficit. Close to half a million dollars. So? I think you took it. Me? <laughs> <laughs> to finance one of your films or pay back investors. Of course that's what she told you. Why else do you think she came over here the other day? Who? Sally! <sighs> I don't care what she said. We caught her, we're taking her to court, and that's it. Sally, 
You think Sally took the money? There you go again. You know this. She's a criminal, Betsy. You cannot let her get away with this. Not this time. This time? You going out? Uh, yeah. Not bad for a waitress. What did Spielberg have to say? Where's the money? Gone. Half a million dollars. Gone. Long story. What happened to you? What do you mean, what happened to me? Didn't we already have this conversation? We never had this conversation because I was never lied to by my own sister. <laughs> How would you know? Sally, you, you don't do that to family. Like, now you care about family? Like, when you made your first million after your second book? Did you give any of that money to anyone in your family? No, you didn't. Sure, when mom died, you paid for the funeral and burial. You had to. They didn't have enough insurance. But then when dad got sick and lost his job and asked you for help, Flat out turned him down. Why did you do that? Nobody knew. So don't. And where is he now? In Arizona, in a retirement home that you put him in. Even though you pay the bills, you never, ever call him. How many phones do you own? And even though he'll never tell you to your face, he hates you for it. Did you have a better relationship with him? No thanks to you. You love that cat more than you love family. You and your books. You're so busy being a celebrity, you can't even see what it did to you or your family. You're right. More than you'll ever know. But that's where you being right begins and ends. Whatever the reason, that is no justification for what you did. You're a criminal. There was a time when I lost you. And after you were gone, I always imagined what you might have become. But it wasn't this. Sister, you've lost it. At least I know what I did. I think you'll never forgive me for it. I have to know what you guys are going to do. So just do it! I'm sorry things didn't turn out the way you thought they would. Did you know about No God? I did. Why did 
didn't you tell me? I don't know. Maybe I was trying to see if you were telling the truth. So you do believe me? Atheists base everything on the material world, what they can see, what they can touch. Through faith, believers see another dimension beyond what they can see, what, beyond what they can touch. That is felt here in the heart. So that's a yes. It is. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna see that video and what I said. It's all over the internet. You saw it? Yeah. It was even on the morning news. So that's really gonna mess up this life. Maybe. Answer my last prayer. Maybe he did. What? Maybe he said no. No, I can't tell you how to live the rest of this life, Betsy, but what works for me is to dream big, work hard, and let God do what he does. And trust that he knows what he's doing. Thank you. You don't know me, do you? <sighs> Heavenly Father, If this was a lesson to be learned, I get it. If you gave me everything I wanted, I would become selfish and self-sufficient and turn my back on you. I was treating you more like Santa Claus than I was Lord of the universe and my savior. Prayer is more about loving you than it is getting things from you. It's more about what you want from me and what you want to do with my life. We are called here to be like Jesus. Selfless. Putting you first, not my will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.
Cadillac. That's a fully loaded sharp car. Or the on pilot. This one. Great. Let's go sign the paperwork. What has she got you doing now? Sally has nothing to do with this, all right? It's my decision. It's her. I know it's her. It's not. All right? I'm not even talking to Sally anymore. And uh, we're not taking her to court. What? It was my corporation. Was? What, 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 what do you mean, was? I... What about the help? I took care of them. What about me? Us. Darren, financially, you're going to be fine. As for us. I know you'll never understand this. But there never was an us. I'll do whatever you say. Okay, we can do whatever you want. I'm sorry. I am doing what I want. Thank you. What? Thank you.
Hello. So it appears our story has come to a not-so-happy ending. The main character sits alone in her new home. Very small home. With her new kitty. Anticipating the future. Will she ever write again? And if so, what will her next book be about?
I... I know this isn't how the book ends. did good today. So did you. <laughs> oh, by the way, I never prayed for this to happen. Really? That's okay. I did. Life's journey has my gold in the street, but the sun rises every day. 